Hello and welcome back. Uh, I hope uh, you have seen my first video on this chapter that is theory of supply and elasticity of supply. So today we will continue further uh, in this video where I'll uh, tell you some more topics and uh, I'll help you out to clear some of your doubts uh, so that uh, you can understand the chapter in a easier and a better way. Right. So let us quickly see what are the things we have done uh, and then we'll continue with the topics. So we have gone through a topic called meaning of supply, then uh, features are features and the definitions of supply where uh, three important features I pointed out. I also told there is one important question that come difference between supply and stock. So we have also seen this. We will uh, we have seen the uh, types of supply where we have discussed about individual supply and uh, market supply curve i told how we obtain market supply curve so it is a horizontal summation of individual supply after this we have uh, talked about three more types of supply if you remember market period supply short period supply and long period supply and accordingly uh, i have also told told that this is a supply curve in case of market period short period and long period here i told that in case of short period the supply curve will be uh, steeper that represent inelastic nature and here the supply curve will be flatter that represent elastic in nature of the supply curve then if you remember we have discussed some factors that can affect the quantity supply by a producer where we have discussed that how price goal of the producer and natural factor affect the quantity supply and uh, this was the last slide that we have discussed where I told that how input price price of the related good and technique of productions are the th uh, are the another three factors that affect the supply so today we are going to start from uh, this slide where uh, we will discuss about three more factors that affect the or i may say the three more factors that is a determinant of supply and uh, so let us uh, start with this so as you can see here the one of the uh, factor that can affect the supply of the commodity by a producer is nature of the industry in this uh, nature of the industry, we can talk about uh, two different nature of the firm or two different nature of the industry. That is monopoly nature and competitive nature. You can see the word is mentioned here, monopoly and competitive. So monopoly is nothing but monopoly form of market is that form where there is a single producer and many buyer. So in short, if I uh, can make you understand what is monopoly, then monopoly is that market form where we find that there is a single producer and many buyer. And of course, when we are talking about single producer, that means he has a market power to control the market right because there is no competitors of him is present in the market and in this situation what we see that if that is a situation where monopoly exists then definitely the monopoly will always try to keep the supply less than the demand because if the supply of the commodity is less than the demand then only he can fetch a uh, higher price of the commodity from the market and he and he can take the uh, profit from the market condition so uh, what we say that in case of monopoly the quantity supply of the commodity reduces whereas if we are talking about another form of market that is called competitive market form then in competitive market form there are many producer and at the same time many buyer so if any one producer reduces the quantity of good then the amount of good that is available in the market does not get affected and hence we see that in uh, such market form that is in the competitive market form the producer has no incentive to reduce the uh, commodity because other competitors uh, are not going to do the same so we see that in case of competitive market form the quantity supply uh, remain uh, higher as compared to the monop monopoly market form so this uh, this say that how the nature of the industry can affect the quantity supply in the market right okay uh, moving on to the next point if you see the next point the next point tell government policy and it is told here that indirect taxes are likely to increase the cost of production of the commodity thereby leads the decrease in the supply. On the other hand, subsidies encourage the producer to produce more of the commodity. So this is a very uh, common case that uh, we have discussed in a uh, previous video also where I told that government policy is also one of a very important factor that affect the supply when the government gives subsidies. When the government gives subsidies to the firm and the factory 
they are encouraged because their profit margin increase and hence they produce more of that commodity on the other hand if the government increase the tax on the commodity then the cost of production of the commodity will increase and this is going to lower their profit margin and hence the producer is going to reduce the supply so the government policy in uh, one way or other also affect the quantity supply of a commodity by a producer so we are saying that the government policy is also one of the important determinant of supply and coming on to the last uh, factor that affect the supply is future expectation of price i hope you remember uh, this word that is future expectation of price when i was explaining this thing in my video uh, on uh, theory of demand right so here also we will bring this as a one of the important factor that uh, also affect the quantity supply and uh, how uh, this is affecting so i'll explain you uh, suppose uh, i'll take a condition i'll take a situation where i'm saying that uh, imagine the situation is like this that a producer is producing certain commodity and uh, he is expecting that in future the price of that commodity is going to rise so what will be his behavior in the present so if a producer expect that in the future the price of the commodity is going to rise then surely in the present he is going to supply less or he is going to stock the good so that in the future when the price will rise he will uh, supply the good and he will uh, fetch more money from the market so that is what the general behavior we are going to see uh, from the producer side if he is expecting the future price to rise on the other hand suppose if uh, the producer uh, uh, expect that in the future the price is going to fall then definitely in the present time he is going to supply maximum of the commodity so that uh, he, he does not have to bear a loss in the future so this is how actually the future expectation affect the supply of the commodity so hope you have understood the factors affecting supply so we will uh, now move on to some more uh, new topics in this chapter and we'll try to understand uh, what the topics are as you can see here we are now talking about supply functions it is very similar to the demand function that we have done as i told uh, that demand function is a functional relationship uh, between quantity demand and the factors affecting demand so exactly in the same manner supply function is also the same supply function refers to the uh, functional relationship between quantity supply and the factors affecting supply so just now we have uh, i have shown you some very important factors that affect the supply as you can see price goal natural factor technique of productions uh, nature of industry government policy so when we represent these factor in the form of equation like this or in the functions like this where qs represent quantity supply and quantity supply of a commodity is a function of price so if price will change this is going to affect quantity supply if g g is the goal of the producer so if g will change that is also going to affect the quantity supply so like this L, uh, ip ip is an input price t is a technology n is a natural factor go is the government policy e represent here future expectation and nf represent natural factor so if any one of these factor changes if any one of these factor changes that will affect or will have an effect on quantity supply or it may be a, a situation like this that if other factors say suppose if all these factors remain constant only when only one factor changes then also the quantity supply get affected so when we represent uh, the factors affecting quantity supply in a functional relationship like this then this functional relationship is called supply function so this is what actually the concept of uh, supply function is okay so we will move further uh, again you can see here the same type of uh, topic is being discussed uh, in uh, demand theory we have discussed about uh, demand schedule and here we are going to discuss about in the, uh, supply schedule as you know that uh, supply there are two types of supply schedule one is called individual supply schedule and one is market supply schedule so schedule as i told it is nothing but it is a tabular representation of uh, price and quantity so here in this concept also uh, supply schedule is uh, is a concept where we represent uh, the information uh, of price and quantity supply in a tabular form in a table form so when we represent the information of price and quantity supply in a table form then that representation is called supply schedule 
and if we are talking about single producer say suppose if we are talking about a single producer uh, or a producer who is producing that commodity and the information when it is represented with the help of table then this table we are we have given a names individual supply schedule you can see here the definition refers to tabular statement that shows different quantity of a commodity that a producer or firm are willing to produce so when the price is 10 it may that the firm is ready to uh, supply only 100 unit of the good when the price increased to 20 now the firm is ready to uh, supply 110 unit of the good so the price and quantity relationship uh, or the information when represented in a table is called supply schedule when we represent this information uh, of all the firms together then that tabular presentation is called market supply schedule so as you can see here this is a, a market supply schedule where we are uh, talking like this we are saying like this that uh, this is a hypothetical example that i have taken so we are telling like this that when the price of uh, a commodity is uh, 10 then quantity supply by firm a is 100 unit and the quantity supply by firm b is 90 unit so therefore uh, assuming that there are only two producers so the total quantity of uh, uh, good that is supplied in the market is 190 we are uh, just uh, simply adding this so when the price increased to 20 he is supplying 110 and uh, firm b is now ready to supply 100 unit willing to supply 100 unit so if we add up we are going to get 210 units so this is what actually called market supply schedule uh, summation of the individual supply mm, uh, then we have uh, a very important law here again as we have seen in the theory of demand that is law of demand here we are talking about law of supply again given by a same person alfred marshall you can see here alfred marshall was the person who has given the law of supply and the supply and the law is uh, very similar to what we have seen in the law of demand the law states that when uh, uh, other things remaining same that is the other factors remember the supply function let me show you the supply function so according to the law of supply when all these factors say suppose g these factor when these factor remain constant there is no change in this factor and we are interested to know the relation between price of the commodity and the quantity supply of the commodity then that function is called uh, sub, uh, that is called law of supply so according to the law of supply when we are assuming the other factors affecting supply to be constant uh, then we see that price and quantity supply is directly related so when price of the commodity rises up the quantity supply also rise when price fall quantity supply also fall so this is actually called law of supply and when this price and uh, quantity supply information is uh, represented or is presented with the help of a graph right so when we represent this price and supply information in a graph then we say that graph is called supply curve that is called supply curve you can as you can see here that is uh, this is a supply curve this is my supply curve that is representing the price and quantity supply information as you can see from this that when price is one uh, supply is 10 when the price increased to 2 the supply also increase uh, to 30 when the price increased to 3 now the supply is 40 so as you can see the price is rising at the same time the quantity supply is also rising just opposite to what we have seen in the theory of demand in the theory of demand if you remember the there was an inverse relation between price and quantity demanded so the demand curve was a downward sloping like this but here we can see that the uh, supply curve is upward rising representing the law of supply so when we are showing the supply curve for a single firm then of course it is an upward rising curve and uh, market supply if you remember uh, we have discussed this topic uh, when we were talking about the types of supply so market supply is nothing but it is a, a supply curve that we obtain by adding up the individual supply so that is what actually the concept of market supply is here right so i'm not going to uh, go much into this topic because we have already discussed market supply in my first video right okay uh, we'll come on to this part where we are going to discuss about uh, the reason that why the supply curve is upward rising if you remember uh, i explained you while explaining you the theory of demand reason for downward sloping of the demand curve with the there we have discussed some points like uh, law of diminishing marginal utility then income effect substitution effect number of consumer so here uh, 
we are going to see the, uh, or we are going to find out that why supply curve is upward rising or why the price and quantity supply is uh, directly related right so there are some reason that is given the first reason is profit incentive profit incentive is one of the important reason to explain that why supply curve is upward rising why because when the price of any commodity rises the profit margin of a producer also increases and this motivate the producer to produce more of the commodity and take the uh, uh, take the uh, i may say uh, take the con favorable condition uh, uh, favorable condition of the market uh, in their favor so that is the uh, point that why uh, profit incentive is one of the important reason that explain the direct relationship between price and quantity supply similarly you can see here the second uh, second point is increase in the number of producer that explain very clearly so if the price suppose if the price of any commodity uh, rises up uh, the existing producer are going to make huge profit and uh, the producer uh, outside producer is going to see that uh, the existing producers are making profit and they will be also willing to come into the same business and when they come to the same uh, business they are going to supply the commodity and as a result uh, together the total quantity of the good that will be supplied in the market is going to increase because of the coming of the new producer in the economy and that, this is the reason that uh, why we are saying that when price of the commodity rises we see the number of the uh, the quant quantity of the good that is supplied in the market also increases so this is a uh, another reason that explain that why uh, price and supply is having a direct relationship with each other coming on to the last uh, uh, that is the uh, last point here i hope uh, 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 this is the last point which explain that why there is a direct relation between price so it is written change in stock so when there is a high price producer bring out their stock for sell and thus the supply increases so this is what actually i explained you when i when i was trying to explain you the difference between stock and supply so what happened when the price of any commodity increases even if the producer cannot increase the supply or cannot produce the good does not matter because i told that the producer always maintain some stocks that stock is used to take the advantage of the market situation so when price of the commodity suddenly increases the producer are going to uh, pre uh, sell the commodity from their stock and as a result we will see that quantity supply in the market is going to increase so that again explain that when price is rising uh, there is a change in stock that is the stock of the uh, producer reduces up because from the stock the producer supply the commodity in the market and uh, hence the quantity supply increases so this uh, these three points are there to explain that why we find that the price and uh, supply quantity supply is having a direct relationship i hope now you have understood this so we'll see further uh, into this topic that is what is there in this chapter uh, we have a uh, another topic here that is called exception to the law of supply as you remember we have also discussed uh, the same in the theory of demand that is exception to the law of demand here we are having a topic called exception to the law of supply we say that according to the law of supply price and quantity supply is directly related but this is not always the situation there are some cases where we find that even if the price is rising the supply can uh, supply is not rising so that means the law of supply does not follow here or sometimes we see that when the price rises up the quantity supply reduces up reduce so that is again uh, another uh, situation where we can say the law of supply does not exist so there can be anything that price rises quantity supply is not rising that is also they are not following the law of supply or when the price rise quantity supply fall that is also a situation where we say the law of supply does not follow so let us see that what are the exceptions in the economy so the first exception is a rare goods or we say good of auction so rare goods when we are talking about rare goods uh, you can see one pictures here uh, like this is a uh, painting and uh, some of you can identify that uh, what uh, this painting is uh, this is a, a cartoon picture of a painting of a mona lisa and of course you can see here some coins uh, so let us uh, think that these coins are uh, means uh, from the time of uh, uh, pirates of uh, caribbean means that means i simply mean to say that uh, let us think that uh, these are the very old coin or very rare coin that existed in the history uh, and uh, something like this so we see that uh, for goods like this 
even if the price of the good rises up their supply cannot be increases due to the rare availability of them or it is not possible to increase their supply so suppose if the uh, if the mona lisa's painting uh, is being auctioned and if the price is rising so is it possible for the supplier to increase the uh, increase the supply of the mona lisa painting no because we know very well that uh, this mona lisa painting was uh, uh, produced by or i may say it is painted by leonardo da vinci and he uh, he is not alive so it's not possible to increase increase the uh, quantity of the mona lisa painting if the price of the painting is uh, rising similarly if we are talking about rare coins that is uh, that existed in history so even if the price of these coins rise up in the market uh, then also we find that the increase supply that is increase in supply is not possible so we can say that rare good or good of auctions are those good where the law of supply does not exist similarly we can talk about uh, another situation where law of supply does not exist that is called seasonal good or agricultural goods so you can see here like uh, we can talk about mango we can talk about strawberries we can talk about uh, uh, that is your uh, watermelon so this is a watermelon so i have taken three pictures to make you understand that uh, why we are saying that uh, seasonal goods are also an exceptions to the law of supply in the off season so uh, when we uh, in the on season it, it is possible of course but in the off season when uh, there is a off season even if the price of mango is uh, rising then the producer cannot increase the supply of it because we cannot uh, grow mango in the off season similarly if we are talking about strawberries cultivation we know that uh, during a uh, during some time in a year the strawberry cultivations or the strawberry production is possible so in the off season if the price of the strawberry increases then also it is not possible to increase the supply of strawberries so that explain that why uh, seasonal good or agricultural goods uh, does not follow the uh, law of supply so so they are they fall into a category called exception to the law of supply and finally we have here that is a labor supply curve uh, this is again a very interesting phenomenon where we find that uh, labor supply curve uh, uh, to some extent it follow the uh, law of supply but after a certain point of time uh, the law of supply it does not follow the law of supply what do i mean uh, uh, i don't have here a labor supply curve otherwise i would have shown you the labor supply curve but i can show with the help of the arrow just follow my arrow the point is uh, when we draw the labor supply curve that means the amount of work that i am or amount of uh, that is the uh, time period that i am rendering my service so if you look then that uh, we draw the supply curve like this that first it rises up rises up and then it suddenly backward bend it, it backward bend so the sub labor supply curve is like this so it likes this that is inverted c inverted c it, it is being argued that the labor supply curve is inverted c it's only because that when in the initial phase of life or uh, in the initial time when the wage rate increases because our labor is determined from the wage that how much wage i being paid that will decide the time for which i will be willing to work so in the initial phase of my life when the wage rate is rising i will be willing to work more and more but after a certain point of time when the wage rate is sufficient enough or it is beyond the or it is up to the expectation of that person then he is going to give more preference to laser than to work so laser is also important part so uh, throughout the day we need to work and at the same time we take a rest so rest is nothing but actually we are calling it as a, as a laser so the point is that when the wage increases beyond some level and that is the time where we give more preference to laser as compared to work and we see that uh, even if the wage because wage is nothing but it is the price to the labor so when the wage is rising we find that the work that is the supply of work is reducing so uh, this is a, again a situation where law of demand uh, does not follow because i told uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, exist a uh, law of demand exist only when price is rising and supply is also rising but in case of labor supply i'm telling that when price is rising that is when wage is rising the supply is reducing the supply of labor is reducing so it does not follow the law of supply so this uh, these are the three uh, situations i may say or the uh, conditions where the law of supply does not follow so hope you have uh, uh, understood what is law of supply so quickly we'll go to two more topics as you can see here 
there is a very one very important question that comes that distinguish between movement along the supply curve and shift of the supply curve as you have seen in the theory of demand we have to told that distinguish between movement along the demand and uh, shift of the demand so here also we have the same topic here so when we are talking about movement along the supply so movement along the supply is nothing but uh, we say like this uh, just have a look to the first one when quantity supply of a commodity rises due to rise in its own price and quantity supply fall when the price fall other factors remaining same so other factors that affect supply if they remain same and only if the price of the commodity is changing then on the supply curve of that commodity we move upward or downward the supply curve is not shifted the supply curve is not shifted from here to here or from here to here what we see that we move move on the supply curve so this is a case of movement along the supply curve the movement can be of two type one is called extension and the other is called contraction so what is extension let me explain with the help of this graph as you can see imagine that initially the price was pe and with respect to that price following uh, using this supply curve the uh, quantity of commodity that was supplied was qe so when the price is pe the quantity supply is qe now when the price increases so when the price will increase and from this supply curve i can see that the quantity supply is now q2 so what we can see that when price increased we have moved from this point to this point on the supply curve so we are moving upward when we move upward this is a case of extension why we are seeing extension because the quantity of the supply has increased increased that means there is a extension in the quantity of commodity that is supplied so that is a case of extension on the other hand if the price reduces if the price reduce then we find that the quantity supply also reduce so we are moving from this point to downward we are moving downward this downward movement along the supply curve is called contraction in supply so that is what the two situation of extension and contraction hope you have understood uh, what is movement along the supply and and remember please remember that when we are telling movement movement means only the price is going to change other factors that affect the supply will remain constant so this is the most important thing that we have to remember when we are talking about movement and if we talk about shift of the supply then you can see that uh, in this uh, condition or in this situation we are saying that the price of that commodity remains same so there is no change in price but other factors that affect the supply is changing so let us uh, take one example i hope then you can understand it well so just have a look suppose this is my initial supply curve so if this is a initial supply curve of a commodity and when the price was 3000 the quantity of the commodity that producer is willing to sell is 5 unit now what happened due to the sudden increase in or decrease in input price so if uh, because input price is a, a factor other than price so if there is a decrease in input price or say if we are talking about government policy so if the government reduces the tax so if the government reduce the tax then the profit margin of the producer is going to increase so what he is going to do the price is not changing the price of the commodity remains same but due to the reducing reduction in tax now the profit margin of the producer has increased so definitely he will be willing to supply more of the commodity at that time to take the advantage of the market condition and hence we see that the supply curve from here it is going to shift downward that is now the new supply curve is s1 and see when at the same price 3000 now the point is earlier the producer was uh, able to supply five unit or willing to supply five unit now he is willing to supply six unit at the same uh, same so why he is willing to supply more because the there is a fall in the input price input cost or the government has reduces the tax on the commodity so definitely the quantity supply is going to increase so this is a case of increase in supply we call it increase in supply because supply is increasing and talking in the opposite sense if i say that if the government increase the tax so if the government increase the tax price remaining the same the profit margin of the producer is going to fall and he will be demotivated to produce the commodity and what we are, we are going to see the quantity supply will fall so and as a result the supply curve will shift from s to s2 from this s is going to shift to a new supply curve that is s2 and at the same price 3000 now the supply is 4 so the supply has reduced so this is a case of decrease in supply 
so we call it decrease in supply so when supply curve is moving uh, shifting downward that is a case of increase in supply and when the supply curve shift upward that is a case of uh, uh, sorry when the supply curve shift downward that is a case of increase in supply and when the supply curve shift upward that is a case of decrease in supply so this uh, i hope uh, now uh, it is clear to you what is actually the shift of the supply curve means so i told that one of a very important question is movement along distinguishing distinguish between movement along the supply and shift of the supply so you can write the definition and then you can also draw the picture you can explain uh, the two situation extension contraction and increase and decrease in supply okay so i'll end here uh, hope you are going to like this video we will continue further with the uh, elasticity of supply where i will show you some numericals and uh, some more concept uh, in that chapter okay thank you